This is a brief overview on the topic of rheumatoid arthritis. Briefly, we will be covering the following topics. The definition, the epidemiology of rheumatoid arthritis, the pathogenesis and clinical manifestations, both articular and extraarticular, with more emphasis placed on the extraarticular manifestations, the criteria for diagnosis, as per the American College of Rheumatology, markers of disease activity, and finally, management. The definition of rheumatoid arthritis. The key words in the definition would be that it is a chronic systemic illness, inflammatory in nature, and primarily involving the joints, characterized quite specifically by symmetrical joint swelling, tenderness, and subsequently destruction of the joint, leading to severe disability and premature mortality. It is also considered an autoimmune disease associated with the presence of autoantibodies, which can precede the clinical manifestation by up to 10 years. The epidemiology. Rheumatoid arthritis affects approximately 1% of the population and it's more common in smokers in females, they are affected about three times as often as men. And rheumatoid arthritis will show itself more frequently in increased age. The onset of rheumatoid arthritis as such is usually between the fourth and fifth decades of life. Pathogenesis. The pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis is multifactorial, with both genetic and environmental factors in play. The genetic basis of the disease is related to the immune system, in particular the HLA major histocompatibility genes, amongst others. This is further exacerbated by environmental factors such as age and smoking. The basis of the disease is related to repeated activation of the innate immunity. As we already know, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease and is therefore mediated by autoantibodies, for example, rheumatoid factor, an anti-citronellate peptide, or anti-CCP. These autoantibodies are triggered via the antigens found on type 2 collagen, which is the basis of hyaline cartilage found within the joints. These antigens provoke an immune response via these autoantibodies and lead to inflammation. The subsequent inflammatory process is triggered via the activation of inflammatory cells cytokines, mast cells, the activation of macrophages, fibroblasts, chondrocytes, and complement. The process of inflammation also involves angiogenesis, which potentiates the fluid transportation into the joint space. This fluid carries with it further inflammatory cells. Simultaneously, neutrophils and polymorphonucleosides within the synovial fluid are releasing free radicals, which further contribute to joint damage. The entire process culminates in edema within the joint and leads to eventual bone, cartilage and ligament erosion as well as destruction, which leads to the joint deformity that we see in clinical practice. Once this deformity becomes disabling, the patient will actually experience a loss of function as well. Clinical manifestations. In approaching a patient with suspected rheumatoid arthritis, it is important to take a good history and physical examination and that this is catered to both articular and extra-articular manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis, as the patient may present with either one or both. It is also important to take a thorough social history, including patient's smoking history, as well as her occupation and hobbies. As the disease can be chronic and quite debilitating, it is important to know what the patient's social support is like, as well as a pre-morbid status, as this will help to cater your further management. As rheumatoid arthritis belongs to a larger group of autoimmune diseases, the joint disease that is particular to rheumatoid arthritis can also present in other illnesses such as SLE and IBD, and a careful history, physical examination, and subsequent investigation will help you to determine whether the disease is indeed rheumatoid arthritis or another manifestation. As the disease is quite variable along its course, it is also important to note that the patient may actually be in remission and not in a flare of rheumatoid arthritis, and this can be misleading. 